check it out, everybody. This is the newest addition here at Garden State Tortoise. This is Scuttle. Scuttle might look like a sea turtle to you, but he absolutely is not. He is a fly river turtle, also known as a pig nose turtle because, well, he's got the nose of a pig. Scuttle has been living in here in our nature room, but we like to take him outside for some supervised swims. So come on with me. We're gonna go put him in the aquascape ecosystem and see how he does. So Scuttle is a pretty fascinating species. As I said, he looks like a freshwater sea turtle, but he is by no means a sea turtle. He's freshwater, and he occurs in lagoons and river systems over in northern Australia and southern New Guinea. His species, Coretta Kelly's in Sculpta, is pretty incredible because they are the only living member of that genus, Coretta Kelly's. The family that they're a part of, which is Coretta Kelly dates way, 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 way back as far as the fossil record goes. And the fossil record is extremely extensive back then. As I said, right now, they only occur in Australia and New Guinea, but back then, fossils of them were turning up in North America and even in Europe. So this turtle has a pretty isolated range now, but at one time, it was very extensive. They're known for extreme aggression. They're an omnivorous species, which means they eat both plant and animal matter. But when it comes to other turtles of any species, even their own kind, they are over the top aggressive. And in fact, that's one of the reasons why Scuttle came to us. He came to us from the Jenkinson's Aquarium. You guys have seen our work with them in other videos where we've taken animals from them that they didn't have room for at the aquarium. While they're redoing some things now, he needed a place to go, particularly because he does not get along with other turtles. Simply put, they're bullies. And that's also why he has to live alone and why he gets supervised time out here in the aquascape ecosystem because there's so many other turtles in here that he could really beat up. So we bring him out here, we let him enjoy the sunshine and the warmth and the expansiveness of this pond. And then he comes back into his, what we've been calling quarantine tub, which is the same tub that Chief Brody got to live in before he got permanently moved outdoors. But we have plans in the works right now for an amazing indoor enclosure. Now, if you're wondering why does he have to live indoors, it's because they are sensitive to colder temperatures. Once it starts getting to 50 and below, they start developing sores, they kind of shut down and they no longer do well and they can actually perish pretty quickly. So right now it's in the mid 90s with real feels over 100. So it's perfectly safe for him to be enjoying some time in the outdoors here in New Jersey. And we get to observe him daily. Little is known about the species. And in fact, there's really no known reports of successfully breeding them in captivity. They are endangered and they really are so remarkable. Pig nose, flippers like a sea turtle, and they kind of look like a soft shell. And the family that they occur in is alongside the soft shell turtles. But what's different about them is they don't actually have a pliable shell, especially on the ridge line where you can kind of bend it, you know, similar to an Eastern spiny soft shell or a Florida soft shell, for example. They have that hardened bony carapace, but they have a layer of leathery skin over them. Incredibly beautiful, incredibly cute. And it's just so awesome to watch them glide through the water. I mean, look at it. It's like you're looking at a sea turtle in our backyard, but they absolutely are not. So Scuttle the Fly River Turtle is not the only new kid on the block here at Garden State Tortoise. We recently had some other animals donated to us. And speaking of donations, our good friend Jeff just donated all these amazing cactus pads to help feed our animals. Jeff, this stuff's amazing. This is gonna come so in handy and it's gonna help us feed so many of our animals. And also, thanks to our buddy Mike for driving this stuff to us. So, what do you say we go meet some other powerhouses? Come here, pal. <laughs> this here is Morby. He's an African spur thigh tortoise. Okay, pal. Come on, Dixie. Come on. She's even heavier than him. So this right here is Morby. He is a 30 year old African spur thigh tortoise or sulcata tortoise that recently came to live here at Garden State Tortoise after some friends of ours couldn't provide for him the way they would like to anymore. And uh, well, Morby, as you can tell, he's had a pretty harsh past. When they first got him, he was actually very ill. 
um, and he has suffered from some improper growth, and he's also got a split in his beak. It's all cosmetic lucky for him, and he has been behaving otherwise as a completely natural sulcata. I love sulcatas, and as you guys probably have learned by now after meeting Dixie, our other sulcata tortoise, I don't care if it's rare, or I don't care if it's common. I love them all, and it is just so awesome to be able to interact with animals like this. This is the planet's third largest tortoise species. So, they're no joke, and as I've already shown you, they can dig some pretty gnarly burrows. Dixie's current burrow measures eight feet in depth. I actually fit all the way inside it, and they're a challenge. You know, they're not for everybody, but if you can provide for these tortoises, they're a great animal to offer a home to. Here in South Jersey, they get to live outside a good portion of the year, but then they do have to come inside the building for winter, and they don't skip a beat in there either. So, Morby is here now. He seems to be doing pretty well. But you know what's really cool about him too? Sulcatas can be known to be pretty bold and aggressive. And uh, Dixie has knocked me on my butt before. Hey. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's not like that. He actually has a very sweet disposition, especially for a male. You can tell he's got a huge appetite. He just finished that cactus pad and he's moving right on to some grass. And this is a grassland species. So feeding sulcatas grass or letting them mow your lawn is actually very natural for them and it's very good for them. As you can see, Dixie back here is uh, starting to make this area of the lawn go bare already. So I'm gonna let Dixie and Morby enjoy the lawn and their new cactus pads right here. And uh, I got two more newcomers to show you guys. So let's go. This beauty right here is Mad-Eye, and he's named that because he's actually missing one of his eyes. He's an adult male elderly yellowfoot tortoise. These are very similar to the redfoots and the cherryheads, and that they come from South America, and they're a forest dwelling species, although they do move into grasslands and savanna type areas, and they really, really love humidity. They also eat a lot of animal matter. They're omnivorous, they eat fruit, they eat plants, and they do not hesitate to eat dead animals, and even invertebrates, and small animals that are still alive. Really, really interesting species that, you know, they don't get enough respect. They're not conspicuously colored or really vibrant, so a lot of people don't really give them the time of day, which is a shame because they're a fascinating, fantastic species of tortoise, which sadly are still exported in droves after being taken out of the wild, and they also still eat these in some parts of the world. But this guy, came to us along with Morby and another tortoise I'm gonna show you guys in a second. And he's doing great. He's loving the humidity out here and the heat in South Jersey. And uh, just like redfoot tortoises, these guys don't hesitate to use little ponds or vernal pools where they can soak in for hours and hours on end. All right, so I've got one more interesting tortoise to show you guys and let you meet for the first time. This here is Ellie, and she's an adult female elongated tortoise, Indotestudo elongata, and she's actually really huge. She's pretty much at the max for her adult size. These animals can get to be about 12 inches. I have to measure her, but I think she's about 13 at least. Um, she's a bit overweight. She's got some work that we got to do on her. We got to let her trim back a little bit. Right now, we are offering her some things that aren't the best things to give her because we're trying to learn her behavior a little bit. She's a very shy tortoise, which is not unlike most elongated. Again, forest dwelling. They like humid, wet forests with a lot of canopy. They like to hide, uh, and it is very sunny and very hot right now. So she's enjoying the humidity, but you can tell she's already heading right back into cover awesome tortoise, another one you don't see too much of, and another one that doesn't get that much respect because they don't have the most conspicuous or brilliant markings as something like, say, an Indian star tortoise or a radiated tortoise would have. But nonetheless, I love them. I haven't worked with them in a hot minute, so it's really cool to have one here again. And uh, she's been around for a long time, just like Morby and just like uh, the yellowfoot tortoise that I just showed you guys. So there you go. Those are our new additions here at Garden State Tortoise. We're happy to have them and excited to see what the future brings. It's not easy housing all these animals like this and continuously taking new ones in. We have the means to do it, but there's always something else going on. So I just got to introduce to you guys the new animals, but you can't forget about the animals that have been here. And uh, look at this mess of slop in front of me. If you guys remember, we just changed Chief Brody, the alligator snapping turtles pond a couple videos ago. And uh, well, here we are at it again. But there's a cool reason behind why this pond is so dirty right now. Recently, we went up to the Turtleback Zoo because they called us to come up and pick up some donations. They donated a ton 
of fresh fish to us to feed the animals, which is epic. It's so awesome when people come through like that, especially when zoos help out. It's just so awesome, and we did. We got to feed our entire collection so much good stuff. With a good feeding comes a lot of poop, and uh, Chief Brody has decided to unleash the demons, and it's really a shame that you guys can't smell this right now. So uh, I'm draining his pond. I'm gonna give it a nice thorough uh, clean and rinse. Again, not gonna take all that beneficial stuff out of the bottom because the turtle needs that, and so does the biology of the pond. Some of the fish that we fed out was herring, which is an extremely oily fish, so uh, that has made its way into the water through uh, Brody's bowels. And uh, this is gonna be quite the project that's gonna take me the rest of the day, but hey, that's all part of it. I signed up for this, right? So I just got done telling you guys that species like redfoots, elongateds, and uh, yellowfoots appreciate humidity and water uh, and a little bit more forest dwelling type habitat. Uh, well, it's way too hot and dry today. So what I'm doing is I'm pulling everybody down. They have several bodies of naturally built ponds in here. And what I mean by natural is these things fill up with water, hold water for a while, and then they eventually drain out. And they really drain out when there's a drought. And that's what we're going through right now. So I'm gonna fill them back up and just kind of give these guys an artificial rain because there's no rain in the forecast right now. And um, these tortoises are durable, they're resilient, they can handle this, but hey, they're my responsibility, so why not help them out a little bit and uh, give them a little refresher.